signed and sealed. It's a done deal for BEC workers. The chief of police warns that a crackdown is on its way for illegal web shops. And Elizabeth MP Ryan Pinder resigns from cabinet. We've got these stories and a whole lot more. I'm your host, Krishna Virgil, and this is the Tribune's Top 5. After months of contention between the government and the BC Union, a new industrial agreement was signed this week, and BC Executive Chairman Leslie Miller was not too happy about it. Labor Minister Shane Gibson and Bahamas Electricity Corporation General Manager Kevin Baston signed a new industrial agreement on behalf of the government and the corporation with the Bahamas Electrical Workers Union on Wednesday. However, the new agreement was signed in the absence of BEC Executive Chairman Leslie Miller. Mr. Miller has expressed concerns about the contract, particularly requests for lump sum payments and issues over rostering. He previously said the agreement was not in the best interest of the people. In the new contract, existing workers will not receive a salary increase. However, more than 1,000 union members are expected to receive a lump sum payment ranging from $1,200 to $3,200 next week in addition to Christmas bonuses. Existing workers will not have to contribute to pension or insurance plans. However, provisions were made for new employees to pay 30% of their insurance costs. As it relates to rostering, Mr. Baston said while no agreement was added to the contract for existing employees, the union and the government will continue to negotiate and they will have 180 days to come to an agreement on this issue. Immigration officials are investigating allegations of abuse from a woman born in the Bahamas to Haitian parents, Foreign Affairs and Immigration Minister Fred Mitchell announced on Sunday. While he denied any assault or battery of people picked up in recent routine checks, Mr. Mitchell said that every public complaint of abuse is looked into. He was referring to three reports published exclusively in the Tribune last week. He added that officials were looking into to installing cameras in immigration buses as a precautionary measure. In one incident, a 19-year-old woman named Dahin Nonard, born in the Bahamas to Haitian parents, told the Tribune that she was kicked several times, punched, and put in a headlock by immigration officers on last week. Human rights lawyer Fred Smith, QC, has also said that immigration officials accosted him on Wednesday afternoon because he was taking photographs of them carrying out apprehensions at the Lyndon Pinling International Airport. And then there are claims that children were made to sleep on the cold floor at the detention center following the first day of raids when the government's new immigration policy came into effect. While Mr. Mitchell confirmed that Ms. Nonard filed a complaint on Thursday that is now under investigation, he said neither her account or that of Mr. Fred Smith matched official records. Nearly three weeks since the government's new gaming regulations came into force, Police Commissioner Ellison Greenslade warned that a crackdown was on its way for all illegal web shops that are operating outside of the legal framework of the law. Police Chief Ellison Greenslade said on Thursday that officers will begin to shut down web shops in the next few days that are found operating outside the legal framework of the new gaming regulations that came into force on November 24th. He explained that the crackdown would involve the arrest of patrons found in web shops during police raids and the confiscation of gaming equipment. He added that those patrons would also face charges before the court. However, Mr. Greenslay did not say when the planned operations would begin. He said, quote, we will follow the letter of the law, which is crystal clear. The commissioner does not have to dance around anybody or around anything because we did not have the ability to do what we needed to do. We will, in fact, go in and arrest those people that we find illegally gambling. We are going to take the equipment and we will confiscate the equipment. We are going to take them before the courts as per the law, end quote. The deadline for web shop operators to hand in affidavits disclosing whether they intend to remain open through the industry's transitional period passed on Monday. Tourism Minister Obi Wilshkum, who also has responsibility for gaming in the country, told the Tribune on Tuesday that 11 web shops had already submitted affidavits adding that 12 have fully paid their tax arrears totaling over $5 million. He said that eight web shops have already disclosed and 587 stores are currently still open around the country. 
Residents of Exuma raised concerns on Monday that a foreign man convicted in the Bahamas of a sexual offense would be allowed into their community as a prominent figure reportedly lobbied for his release from the Kamaika Road Detention Center. Following his two-year sentence at the Bahamas Department of Correctional Services for a sexual act on a minor in Exuma, the man was sent to the detention center where a deportation order was signed. This was confirmed by Foreign Affairs and Immigration Minister Fred Mitchell, who said the man was being detained, but he has since appealed his planned deportation. The Immigration Board, Mr. Mitchell said, is currently reviewing the matter. However, Mr. Mitchell said he could not go into further detail because of privacy issues. According to sources on the island, the man who lived with his Bahamian wife in a settlement in Exuma has inflicted fear in the hearts of families who believe other children could be targeted if he is allowed to re-enter the community. Later, Exuma MP Anthony Moss admitted to the Tribune that he made inquiries about the man who remains at the detention center on behalf of the man's distraught Bahamian wife who came to him for help. However, Mr. Moss denied that the inquiries were in an attempt to use his political position to have the Dominican man freed. Elizabeth MP Ryan Pinder insisted this week that he was not jumping ship in the wake of his planned resignation from cabinet. Elizabeth MP Ryan Pinder's resignation from cabinet went public on Tuesday night and is expected to take effect at month's end. He is slated to become Dell Tech Bank's new chief legal officer, head of wealth management and a member of the bank's executive committee. Mr. Pinder has been criticized for his decision with Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis accusing him of jumping ship, in part because he is displeased with the government's management of the Bank of the Bahamas. FNM Deputy Leader and Shadow Minister for Finance and Financial Services Peter Turnquest added that with Mr. Pinder's imminent departure from cabinet, visible cracks are beginning to appear in the government. While there has been no official statement from Prime Minister Perry Christie regarding who will be appointed as the new Minister of Financial Services following Mr. Pinder's resignation, the Tribune understands that Pinewood MP Kalish Roll is the top contender among two other possible replacements. Other contenders include Environment Minister Ken Dorset and Minister of State for Legal Affairs Damian Gomez, the Tribune was told. Want to get in on the discussion? Well, here's how you can. Just log on to our website at www.tribune242.com. Like us on Facebook, the Tribune News Network. Send us a tweet at Tribune242 or subscribe to our YouTube page, Tribune242.